Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk. I'm Heidi Smith, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the United Kingdom and uh, today it's one of my fun fold days and I was kind of playing around with the tri-fold card the other day and um, yeah, and, and it kind of wanted to do a variation on a sunflower card um, that I did some time ago and um, rather than folding the flaps back I thought I'd actually leave them as they are and it's a way of combining some of the lovely DSP we have in the One Horse Open Slay as an online exclusive with some of our existing uh, products perched in a tree um, which is a beautiful uh, one and um, yeah so this is the DSP I've used so these are great for all sorts of scene building ones you can see lovely kind of tree designs uh, on the one side um, of and little house I think I'll use that one next sort of footprints in the snow and again a snowscape um, this one with a little deer and some more trees like a, 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 a downhill sled and then another sort of treescape and finally one with a lovely sort of fox in the background as well um, oh, tr sorry, and more trees and more houses. <laughs> so lots of different designs to choose from for each of 12 designs um, that you can use. And as I say, you know, you've got all the stuff, the, the um, all the designs, you know, um, are repeated. So you've got lots of options and lots of uh, paper on the reverse that you can use when you've, you know, if you don't want to use um, them for scene building. So, um, what I'm going to make. Okay, so this is the one I did first of all with Perch in a Tree. So the lovely Robin um, that we've got um, and the sentiment from that stamp set as well as you can see here and it has coordinating dies and we open it up as a trifold card but to display it it just bends forward slightly like so. So kind of a bit of an M shaped card um, so you've got a panel here where you can write your sentiment. I've used the lovely tree die to create a bit of a scene as well. I just thought that was a, just a, a kind of a fun card um, for Christmas. So, as I say, you could, if you didn't want to do it, you could just do it as a, as a trifold card if you wanted to. Just miss out those centre score lines. Um, but it just allows it to pop a little bit. So I played with that one and I thought, well, okay, that's, that's great. But what about some of our other stamp sets that we've got? So I haven't played with this one in ages. This is Cottage Wreaths. So this is to show that you could use it for, you know, kind of, you could use it for Christmas or you could use it for other occasions as well. And you've got lots of options. So if you're into Halloween, you could perhaps use some of the darker trees and kind of do some spooky Halloween scenes. Uh, we've got little extra pine cones and acorns um, and all of these have coordinating dies as well to cut out those images plus we've got some extra ones as well to make some sort of 3d wreaths so i thought i'd have a play with that so that's what i'm going to do um, so let's get started i thought i would have a play with um some blues instead because there are some beautiful blues in this um, in this set um, and as I say you know some of the papers you've got the one with the deer and then you've got the one with this lovely fox as well so I thought I might use that so I've kind of got shades of blue so we've got um, some boho blue and they'll take the blues from the DSP uh, misty moonlight and then I've added in some night of navy which I thought might sort of kind of like almost like a nighttime scene um, for those trees so that's the first piece that I'm going to die cut and I'm going to use my perch in a tree die so there's this big die here and I didn't cut it very straight the last time so I'm going to try and do better this time and I'm just trying to centre that uh, on a piece of card so this piece of card I've made it just marginally literally only millimetres narrower so this is actually sort of 9.3 centimetres by um, 14 you know just under about so about 14.5 something like that so I'm going to pop that through first that's going to give me my four the very back so I'm going, to, I'm going to hold it against to cut the pieces so I've got that lovely fox which is very similar to um it's more similar to my original one with this of with the uh, little deer poking through and I'm just going to pop those pieces out like so So we could either have that with the stuff fox 
as you can see the fox a little bit of, you can't quite see the fox or I actually wondered about having maybe the house and this is what's inspired me I think I'm going to have the house actually because we've got the wreath on the front door there so I'm going to cut that out and that piece of DSP um, is going to be 9.2 centimetres in width so I'm just going to cut that like so and I'm going to trim that down to about 14 point um, about, yeah, just about 14 centimetres and so and that's going to layer over the top to give our kind of card scene so I'm going to clear that out of the way and I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back of this here so I'm going to use a little bit of Tombow just kind of come down all around there and so one of the lovely things about you know it is that uh, Stampin' Up products is you can mix and match because you know you've got that colour match you're never stuck with DSP I used to waste so much money on DSP that didn't quite match because I'd buy it and I'd think, oh yeah, I'll get some cardstock. Oh, it wasn't quite right. So you bought another piece of cardstock. And yeah, that wasn't quite right either. Um, so uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I kind of came to Stampin' Up is because of that colour, that fabulous coordination. So I'm just going to line that up. Like so. Just, I'm just making sure that the edge there. There we go. Okay, so that's my that's for my inside back panel. So now I'm going to actually create some wreaths for the front. So I thought I'd use again the colours that are there. So mossy meadow and um, old olive. And here are the dies. And you've got these two kind of detailed dies as well. So you've got one that has leaves that sort of pop up that's slightly more solid. And then you've got another one that is kind of a layer for the top. So I'll probably do that one in Mossy Meadow. And I'm just going to pop those through. Grab those. As you can see, yeah, they cut out first time. Um, and all I'm going to do is just, you can either use your um, die brush attachment if you take a pick tool, or for these ones I find I want, I use my take a pick. Not least of all, because I'm actually going to be popping up some of these leaves from the reverse. So all I'm going to do is just go round and pop those up like so, as I go all the way around. There we go. So you will end up with two that look like this. So you can just see I've added stuff, those have popped up. So I'm going to layer this one on the top here. Um, I'm going to just grab some fine tip glue. And I'm only going to add that around the middle. Obviously if you wanted to you could layer this um, using some die cut adhesive sheets. But if you're going to do as I want to, which is sort of leave it sort of popped up. Um, you just want to add a little ring of um, glue to that centre panel and that's where those little bottles can be really useful. And then I'm just going to pop that on there like so. So pop that to one side and you'll see that one of the next bits I'm going to do is actually do some some stamping. So I've got our wreath stamp uh, that we've got and I'm going to pop that, um, stamp that in some mossy meadow. Now these are photopolymer stamps so uh, I would recommend if you've got one that you use a stamping pierce mat. Um, for me it's not so bad because I'm stamping onto a pad of paper um, but if you haven't got one of the, the, um, the paper then this is really useful. I also mark these you'll probably see a sort of yellowy dot at the top with where the um, uh, where the top of the, the die aligns 
So there's my wreath. And you can see distinctive stamps. So you've got that lovely um, vari variation without doing anything at all. And then all I'm going to do is you'll see on this die, you've got a little bit that pokes up slightly more than the others. And that indicates it's at the top. So because I've marked my stamp as well, I know that it's going to fit. So I'm just going to pop that through. Um, I'm not going to pop all of that paper through. Just cut that away. And then let's get this lovely wreath that I've got there. Now, um, to decorate it, there are some super little tiny, tiny dots. So I've stamped those and die cut them, and I've done that in advance because it just takes forever. But if I just show you the little trio of dots and just on the side scraps, you can see that they stamp out. And then you've got two dies to cut those out. So you can do sort of, you know, two lots at a time, you'll see there. And you've got the same for the um, sort of like acorny leaves. Um, and this, you've got also got dies for the, uh, for an acorn and um, the spider as well. So if you're into Halloween, you can have some lots of fun with them. Um, with, with, with Halloween type stuff as well. Um, there's also one for the bow, so I have stamped and die cut the bow as well. So you'll see I've got some little dots. And then we can just create a wreath by, what I've done is I've stamped um, the, the trio of dots onto the wreath and I've also die cut some as well so if you're making lots of cards just stamping would make it really easy and if you were doing um, you know making taking your t more time over a card then you could obviously do what I've done there which is um, die cut all of them so I've got lots and lots of, of die so I'm obviously going to use because on this one you can't stamp them so I'm going to use the the, the wreath um, the wreath builder and I'm going to add those on dimensionals as well. Other thing um, that I have failed to do or have I oh no I have it's okay is I've stamped and die cut a second bow as well. So I think that's most of my stamping and die cutting done. This piece here we want to keep that because that's going to create um, some of our, our scene and this is the piece that I've got for the front because I thought that was quite nice we could add the wreath in the middle there so what I've got here is another piece of DSP and I've got some um, yeah look I've got some card <laughs> dear me I don't know what's the matter with me at the moment my, I can't get my words out today so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this card to standard card height so for me that's half a sheet of card normally would be 14.85 so um, that just trims down there and I'm going to come across and I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to trim the length to 29 centimetres. I have worked this out in inches um, and I've worked it out in kind of US card size as well. Uh, so if you have a look in the description box below you'll, you'll find that there. Um, all I'm going to do is now score this and uh, you just need just a few score lines. First of all at 8.5 then at 13, then at 15, and then at 19.5. And that's it's as simple as that, all of our scoring. So that's my scoring done. We're then going to cut some layers. Um, so I want, want a layer of card um, for the front. So this is going to be um, eight centimetres wide. And I'm going to cut that to 14.3. That's my layer for the front. We've got our layer for the inside back, but I want two layers for each side of um, of the uh, <laughs> each for each side. So for those, um, I'm going to cut them at um, for these pieces, these ones here. Okay. So I'm going to cut those. I'm going to cut the layer that goes on the other side of the front of the card. So that's 
four centimeters wide by again 14.3 so that's going to go on the other side here and then the um that's all of my layers of card that I want. Again, you don't want too much bulk um, going on because of it um, of making it close up. But I do want to cut my DSP. So I've got this piece which is going to be the front and the piece um, for the, uh, the front, um, I'm going to cut to 7.4 centimetres. I'm just gonna have a look. Uh -huh. Just trying to look at whether I can get a tree fairly central. So that's 7.4 and again I'm going to trim that down um, to 14 point. Uh, I'm going to cut it down to not 14.3 so yeah 7.4 so 13.8 I'm going to cut that down to. That's going to go on there like so. And the reason I haven't trimmed this down first of all is because this piece um, I'm going to cut in um, to create my two inner pieces. This is um, eight centimetres, you can see here, or just under eight centimetres. So I'm just going to cut that down in half. So about four centimetres each. And again, these are going to be 14.3. So I'm, I've just remembered to cut them both off the same end. So I'm going to cut both of mine off at the bottom. So those are my two pieces for the inside as well. So I've got a piece for the front and then um, two pieces and then this piece I can, I'm can i going to cut to go um, on the front of my card as well. So you see here, I'm going to cut a piece here um, as well as, and then we'll use the, the remainder for those pieces there. So this one is four, so it's going to, it's going to cut it at three and a half. And again, because it's layered, this is going to be 13.8. Like so. so you can see that you can get all of that out of your card just with some judicious cutting, even though I've waffled on rather, rather a lot today. So... We want to uh, reinforce these score lines and I'm just going to do that first of all in one direction, the directions that I've scored them. I'm just making sure those are lining up nice and true. Like so. And then these two narrow ones, I'm just going to score back on themselves. And what that gives us is a nice panel to pop things on. So there's our trifold card. I'm going to be adding a panel in here. We can add my panel on the front there and then we can add the two on the inside as well. as I say these papers you know uh, you, you don't you know you I, I didn't buy the one horse open sleigh bundle um, lovely as I think it is um, I just decided I've got enough kind of Christmassy stamp sets for the moment um, and my ladies my class weren't as interested so I thought well actually do you know what in that case let's we won't we won't use that one um, And also, because I kind of, uh, those of you who follow me, I work quite a long way in advance as well. So I wanted to make sure that when I did my projects, I'd actually got the time um, to share them and for it still to be available. You know, because I think there's, there's nothing worse than somebody showing you something going, oh, look at this, isn't it lovely? And then kind of like, yeah, but it's not available. So um, now if you wanted to keep the weight down, on the card if you were posting this then um, you could gut the middle out of this piece of card that's the front there just add 
like that. I just thought it'd be nice to do, I mean usually I do just colour variations, I thought it'd make a nice change for me to do something that was just a little bit um, different, so actually using two stamp sets with the same DSP, with the same idea but to make it look a little bit different. And also it means that you know you, you can use you know buy the DSP but then use what you've got as well. You know, it's haven't got to buy new stuff all of the time. Lovely as it is to have new craft materials, and I'm a bit of a sucker for that. So the last piece we want to do is this panel on the inside here. So I'm just going to grab some basic white and um, because I've forgotten to cut a piece just under so it's going to be eight centimeters wide I hope by 14.3 and then as I said that leaves me with this little strip I've got left so here you can see it's just over sort of two and a half so it's about 1.3 so all I'm going to do is carefully pop that in there and cut that up the middle so I've now got two little strips of DSP that I can add to this and then just trim um, to get it a flush fit on the end. I'm leaving just a little narrow border you can see there and again on that one. So I've left a little narrow border of white on the outside edge there and then I can just snip so I know that my layers are going to be perfect for that. So now we can add that to the inside of our card. So this is where you would write your message, or stamp a sentiment, and it sort of carries through from the opposite side, as you can see here. So now I can decide what I'm going to pop. So I thought that would look lovely in the middle there, or it would look equally as lovely on the front. But I think I'm going to use this one on the middle. So I'm just going to add some adhesive at the bottom and the centre at the top. For my wreath. And I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm going to just grab a couple of these of the leaves and just pop those top and bottom to add a little interest you can see there and I've probably got some more sprigs that I can add in if I want to so that's going to be my centre panel and then on the front I can now add this one here and because I've got the larger pieces on that back one I can add my dimensionals so that they won't be visible when I add my wreath so I can just take those off now as I say this will make it a little bit bulkier than a standard card but often at Christmas I find I'm you know handing cards out so I'm just going to pop that there Add a bow to the bottom and then I'm going to just grab my pokey tool and these do just fit on the back there. So you can put as many or as few as you like but I'm just going to try and balance that out with A having a trio but also to add a little bit of colour. So 
So there we have a trifold card using the uh, yes, um, using the sleigh paper that I can't remember the name of now. Ah, that pops out to create a wreath card. As you can see there, a little scene. Or you could have it one horse open sleigh. There you go. Or you could have perched in a tree, which looks really sort of wintry and Christmassy as well. So either I think I, I'm, I'm happy with both I rather like my my wreath I think that's a little bit different it certainly again looks very festive do you have a preference let me know and if you'd like to purchase any of the items you've seen today just pop along to Stampin' Up and when you come to the checkout select Heidi Smith as your demonstrator um, or use the current host code uh, which you'll find on my blog and that will automatically um, shop with me and then I please allow contact so I can send you a gift in the post thank you for watching come back and see me soon please hit the subscribe button and a like if you've enjoyed what you've seen and um, any questions just let me know bye now